Everyone's played cup pong. I have, you have, and probably your parents also have too. And then whenever you're playing cup pong, inevitably, you're gonna shoot and you're gonna miss. And when it misses, it's gonna get all over the place. For example, into doorways that go to other rooms, into other weird places, it's gonna hit your friends. It's gonna roll into places that are really hard to reach. It's gonna hit your other friends that are working on your capstone project. And then suddenly you're gonna run out of balls and then you're gonna have to go digging for them all over the place. It's just, it's just not a good experience. Dog, I'm so sick and tired of chasing all these darn balls. If only there was a better solution. Well, Josiah, I'm glad you asked because there is. Now, before we continue, an important disclaimer that we're referring to the water pong version of cup pong, not any other version that this game could be played with. Introducing Splash. What is Splash? Splash is going to be a CV assisted robot that aids players practicing their cup pong shots by catching the shots that the user makes. How does it do that? Well, first a general overview and we'll get into the details. First, we're going to have a camera that tracks the trajectory of the ball. Then it's going to sit on some hardware system and then the landing locations of the ball while midair are going to get sent to some sort of device that's going to move the cup and catch the ball. Specifically for the camera, Jimmy found the Luxonis Oak D Pro. This guy has both a color camera and a depth camera within it and it's capable of running CV models which we would need in order to detect where the ball actually is. Next we have what's called the AMD Kriya KR260. We initially wanted to use hardware acceleration via the FPGA on board to make our trajectory calculation faster due to our short airtime. We ran into a lot of issues that you can read about on reports on our website that are linked below, but essentially we switched to a Raspberry Pi. The Pi would act as the host for the camera code to run on as well as communicate to the receiving system. As for the receiving system, Josiah found this robot called 4XI Draw by Misan of Autodesk Instructables that had a pretty good base in which we could use. Their system is a little different. They're using this gantry-like system to move a pencil up and down in order to create drawings. For our purposes, instead of drawing, we're going to attach a cup holder and then give it coordinates to move to to actually catch the ball. Now this website will serve useful because it supplied essentially everything that we needed in order to actually create this thing, but modify it a little bit ourselves, because this would be especially helpful as none of us really have extensive mechanical experience. A CAD model is even available in which you can see kind of exactly how it all connects and how it all works together. Now that we had the basic components figured out, we immediately started with some basic testing to make sure this thing would even work. First, we found that using a lob shot gives us more airtime which is very helpful for our calculations. So we switched to that model. It also has a better arc for trajectory predictions. And then initially we were thinking about if the simple kinematics equations from physics one would be enough to help us predict the landing location. So we ran a quick test where we drew up a board, did a slow motion video. And then we calculated where it landing location would be based on the initial velocity and then compared it to the actual landing location but it turns out that with the tiny ping pong ball air resistance actually played too much of a role and we couldn't just use a simple kinematics model therefore we had to pivot to something called a common filter so a common filter is an algorithm that uses a lot of measurements that's observed over time to estimate unknown variables and in our case our observed measurements is the position of the ball and the unknown that we were trying to estimate was the trajectory of the ball of where it's flying. So we ended up using our own implementation of the Kalman filter. It seemed really scary at first, but it was basically just a bunch of matrix operations. So what we did was that we generated a series of points in the future of where the ball is going to be flying from our Kalman filter and then extrapolate where that is going to intersect with the table and then that will give us our prediction coordinate. But the common filter needs data to work and we can get this data by implementing a detection model of the ping pong ball. 
We originally started off thinking that we could use a traditional neural net model like YOLO V8. Some of the problems with using a neural net model is first of all it's very computationally intensive. Additionally it was really hard to track the ball when it was moving because the ball basically becomes a blur and it, the model isn't really trained to detect blurry balls. But then we thought that a filter based method would be much better than a neural net method. We decided a range of colors that we would filter out so that we only keep the orange ones that are similar to the color of the orange ball that we're using. Then we filter out anything that is not moving in the frame so that random orange colored objects wouldn't get picked up by the detection model. This gave us a pretty responsive model that was able to detect the ball almost 100% of the time whilst it was flying through the air. While all that was going on, I set up the Raspberry Pi, connected it to the camera, and then looked at some of the examples that the depth AI library within the camera had to offer. The first task was to get Jimmy's detection function working off of live camera feed. In order to do this, I had to look through the code and actually understand how it connects to the camera. So here's footage of the detection working. We noticed that the frame rate was pretty bad, but once we changed the window size, we saw an increase in frame rate in which it could reliably detect the ball even when thrown. Now that 2D was working, I moved on to try to get it to work in 3D, which would utilize the depth features. So then I looked at this spatial location example. Essentially, there's this movable region of interest in which the depth frames are calculated from. So the idea was to turn on the color camera, detect the ball, and then move the region of interest to where the ball is, which would give us the depth coordinates of the ball. Long story short, I got it to work, but the system was too slow and couldn't really keep up with how much processing it required to have both the color camera and the depth camera system working at once. Essentially, we couldn't reliably capture the depth coordinates of the ball as it was moving too fast for the system. Essentially, we added a second camera facing the front to get our missing dimension. Moving on to the receiving system, we initially considered two options, an omni-wheeled car and a gantry. While both have their strengths and weaknesses, we ultimately selected the latter for its speed, precision, and reliability all critical qualities to have in order to catch a small ball and a small cup in a fraction of a second. More specifically, our system is known as a Cartesian XY robot. Pulleys and belts convert torques applied by separate motors into translational motion, driving the cup along two sets of rails. We use a core XY configuration, meaning that both motors work in tandem to move along both axes, rather than each motor being responsible for a single axis. An Arduino runs a flavor of CNC controls firmware called Gerbil, which has been tuned to prioritize agility without sacrificing accuracy. G-code commands are sent serially from the laptop to the Arduino, which then drives the steppers as appropriate. Limit switches are incorporated into our design, such that we can support homing. In other words, translating the cup to a well-defined origin is guaranteeably replicable between individual sessions. Lastly, we laser engraved a metric grid onto a sheet of wood to serve as a base for our robot to rest on. Plus, it provides a frame of reference towards calibration. So now that each component was rounded out, we can start looking at how to integrate the whole thing. Here's a picture I drew up visualizing how our setup's gonna look. We'll make sure that the robot is within the frame of the camera. And then from there, we first base our coordinate X and Y off of the camera because that's the pixels that we start at. And then, those become XYZ in real life. Since the position of the ball is determined by the pixels in the camera, we also had to figure out how do the pixels translate to our real world system. So then I did a brief test where I drew up a two by two centimeter grid, and that's the black hash we see on the bottom. And then on our camera, we displayed the series of red squares that you see. And then when we matched it up from one meter away, it turns out that a 30 by 30 pixel box ended up being a two by two centimeter box in real life. And then we moved the camera back to be two meters away. And we found out that that same 30 by 30 pixel box ended up equaling a four by four centimeter box of the same grid. Therefore, we can conclude the ratio between pixels and centimeters can be used in our mapping. Now you might be wondering, how does catching a missed ball help the user practice? Well. We're not catching every ball. In fact, only a ball within a 10 centimeter radius of the cup. This is to promote the user at least trying to aim, as well as it helps catch any missed balls so you don't have to go chase them around, making your training process faster. We also have this visual feedback system that will show you how you performed 
so you'd know how to improve your next shot. So after setting it all up and writing the code that would interface with the G-code on the Arduino, witness the full glory of Splash. Oh my god! Oh my god.